You gotta pick this thing up and put it next to the LS motor. Look at this thing. Look how big the engine is compared to the strands, dude. That poor thing, dude. I think we all know what meme we're thinking of right now. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, guys. So, today's big... You stub your toe, man? No, it, the transmission rolled on my foot. Yeah, it's not, it's not happy with you. Knows what I'm gonna do to it. <laughs> when it comes to doing an LS swap, figuring out what training you're gonna use is probably one of the biggest parts of the swap because that's probably one of the most expensive, right? T56 is the Chevy Trans that bolts right to it. That's one everyone uses out of mm -hmm. convenience, but they're really expensive. At the end of the day, it kind of feels like a Chevy transmission. We all know what I'm trying to say. Then there's CD09, right? CD09 is like the universal swap trans. Everyone makes an adapter plate for it. What kind of car does Adam LZ's mom have? Solstice. Yeah, that transmission yeah, yeah, yeah. would fit in this car too. That's So those are like probably the most popular ones. So that's kind of what you're working with. And well, the BMW ZF trans in the past recent years has become one of those popular swap trans. They're strong. They used to be easy to get, and they got a small package. Yeah, unlike most of the other transmissions we've spoke about just now, this one is very compact. Yes, ex package. exactly. So, and the fact that Brian actually already has it, and it's local to his chassis, it was kind of a no-brainer to go with this thing. Trying to find a swap kit for it, though, wasn't the easiest thing, but we managed to find one company out in Poland. I think Poland kind of has the BMW scene on lock. Dude, I would love to go drift in Poland. I want to so bad. It looks bad. so, so fun. bad. It's all just a bunch of BMWs raging. Raging. If anyone on the videos are from Poland, can we just stay with you for like a week? Yeah. Who's got a car I can borrow? <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. PMC Motorsports. And in here is our LSX, we can, we'll consider it, yeah. to ZF transmission adapter plate and clutch. And honestly, I never opened it. I did a while ago, but I don't remember what it looks like. So let's check this thing out. Yeah, Pick it cool. up. Make a us. ton of adapters for like a bunch of different engines to BMW, a bunch of different kind of transmissions and other transmissions too. Look at this thing, dude. It looks sick. This thing's crazy. Look at this thing, dude. That's the pilot bearing. The seat already in there. Already in there. Okay. Okay. I didn't need that. I didn't need this. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> First piece, beautiful. Look at this. Oh my god, this has to be one of the craziest death parts I've ever seen. Wow. This thing's beautiful. Look at this. It shows how much smaller the diameter of the transmission is compared to the bolt pattern. Of I know. The V8 engine, engine uh, pattern here looks so funny. If you're a man and you don't appreciate <laughs> a well machined piece of aluminum, What's wrong with you? What, dude, it's just in, it's in the DNA, right? So this will adapt our trans to our engine. This will adapt our engine to our clutch and flywheel. And here, I'm assuming we have a bunch of hardware. Looks like a bunch of hardware. Looks like a bunch of hardware. I'm assuming these are our new flywheel bolts. For sure. Wow, I'm stoked it came with bolts. PMC Motorsports offers a socks, sacks. Socks. Socks. Uh, performance clutch right here. And if you guys are into the BMW or European world, you know that they're definitely, um, high-end option for clutches. It's got BMW on the package, man. Yeah, dude. On. Powered by ZF Race Engineering. They know right. what they're doing. This is their provided clutch disc. Ooh, unsprung. This is going to be one of the interesting pieces of the puzzle because originally, Brian was only trying to make lower, lower 400s, right? That was the goal. And then, he got, then he went a little crazy Very true. It. So this guy right here and this guy right here. Uh, <laughs> so this clutch is rated for 500 foot-pounds of torque at the flywheel. I which, think just as maybe a skosh left. Maybe a skosh left, which is a lot for a single match clutch like this, but. Uh, We're trying to not hook up though, boys. Come on. Yeah, that thing will, this you know, thing will I'm hoping for uh, anti-grip. Uh, here we go. Oh, this we know that they're, they're we shouldn't be hoping, but... Oh yeah, no, Brian's gonna ruin this clutch, but yeah. we're gonna cross our fingers. Everyone, cross your fingers with Brian. So this is the PMZ Motorsports uh, LSX. It's a ZF transmission adapter kit. Beautiful. So, now it's time to install it. But before we do that, Brian's gotta clean his transmission. We yeah. have to get his oil pan on, and we, we have all. to get the back plate on. So let's get this off the stand and get to work.
Another big part of an LS swap is the oil pan. And that's the next piece of puzzle here. Every car is specific to where their subframe is, to where their steering rack is. So every car is gonna need a specific type of fitment of oil pan. And well, Holly happens to make this pan that fits great in the E46. <sighs> It's yeah. a nice, beautiful cast pan. Holly always kills it. And then uh, Brian also upgraded the baffling because it's a drift car, so you need all that baffling in there to make sure the oil stays right there for the pump to grab when doing massive entries. That's right. <laughs> so what's the part number on this one? For this that? is the Holly 302-1. Like well known that this is the pan to use on an E46 or an E36 V8 swap, or LS swap rather. I think some OEM F body pans fit, but mm -hmm. this is definitely the way to go. This is the last piece of the puzzle until we could actually get the trans adapter on, which is actually really <laughs> exciting. So we're gonna RTV up where the front cover and the rear cover meet the block because the heights are slightly different and we don't want to risk it. It's a BMW. You know, I know we're used to oil leaks, but we ain't having it this time. Nice. Oh, that looks good on there, dude. Not too shabby. Is that it? Oh, you got two Douglas that time. Over torque. Oh no, we're just we're seating. Seating <laughs> process. Oh man. So there's two plates that are held together by a bolt load of Allen heads. So we gotta take these apart. So we have this one plate right here that attaches to our transmission. And then we have another plate here that attaches to our engine, the LS side. What do you think, Ann? Pretty fancy Looks piece. like they knew what they were doing. <laughs> Let's see if it fits. So look at... Oh, doweled? Come on. I was, yeah. Oh. Being someone who's done a lot of engine swaps and who have used a lot of different adapter plates, um, I've used a lot of cheap adapter plates. I've used a lot of high-end adapter plates. One of the biggest factors is how well a company can keep all of their pieces centered, right? Because you have, you're basically stacking pieces. And every time you stack something, things become unaligned, right? And so far, the way that all this stuff kind of just clicks together, it gives me a lot of confidence that this thing will perform extremely well. And one plate on. So now it's time for the plate that actually bolts to the trans itself. And as you can see, it has a BMW engine code. So uh, obviously just the BMW side. So factory, we have a dollar right here for the starter that it actually utilizes and it comes with two extra dollars to put in here. So we got one here and then one here, I think, which is good, right? Because dolls are meant for centering. And like we said before, it's all about how well you can get this thing to stay center. Oh, look at that. See, that's tight. Yep. No bolts in it and that thing does not move at all. I love so that. that's what we like to see. Too shabby. From this side, it looks like, like a drag car mid plate. Doesn't it? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I really, I really like the style of it though. It's working. I, I'm, I'm impressed with it so far. So now it's time for our beautiful adapter flywheel. So as you can tell, this thing has a crazy offset and that's just to kind of account for the, you know, adapter plate, right? Since the trans being shoved back, you know, an inch and a half or so, the flywheel's gotta make up for it. And as you can see, something a little different about this is no like ring gear on the outside of it, like you usually see. Now what that's for is actually for the starter engagement. So the starter can spin your flywheel and get the engine started. Well, the way this kit works, it actually uses the LS flex plate from the automatic transmission, which is pretty cool. Keeps the gear off the flywheel itself and actually puts it behind it. So watch this. So that just goes there, kind of like a spacer. Check that out. That's pretty crazy, huh? That's sweet. What's nice is we could use the OEM LS starter since we are using the flex plates. Nice. The clutch install is just like a normal setup. So let's flip this in with the tool. Clean off both sides. We already did that. Just because we don't do stuff on camera doesn't mean it doesn't happen. <laughs> some faith in us. Sometimes I think you guys need me to film wiping my butt just to make sure <laughs> you know what happened. Like, it's so true, dude. Oh, you see that? Race engineering. Huh. It should be fine. You got a race motor. Brian, do the honors, buddy. Oh, such a satisfying sound. <laughs> when it comes to setting up the transmission side of things, it's the same as factory um, when it comes to the factory pivot arm, factory throw-up bearing. The only thing different is the pivot ball itself. It's actually taller. I don't know why I do it. It probably helps offset the throw a little bit to work with the adapter kit a little bit better. Slides right in just like factory. It's in there. Goes right on there. 
wish I had gloves. Mm -hmm. But the shaft that this pivots on, we actually have to lube up because this spends its whole life literally going back and forth on the shaft. Pause. This is plastic, but this piece is plastic and not metal, so it you know helps a little bit, but we're gonna just shove some grease in there like this. Pop it in. Look at that. That's all we got. That's how that works. Jimmy can do it. Yes, he can. Oh, I'm liking the sounds. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah, there's so many Allen keys that hold this thing together. But you know what's gonna happen, Deej? They're gonna get loose? No, no. <laughs> what? It ain't going nowhere. It might go somewhere. Nope. Not going nowhere. Not going nowhere. There's a lot of torque, see, from here to here. How is it? How does it look? How's the trans look compared to the engine? Not that dwarfed. It doesn't look that small now. It kind of does. Stop. Deej, come hold it for me. It's kind of dinky. D DJ. I'm, I'm just telling you. That's so funny, dude. It looks like a two-speed transmission. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> like That's so funny, that dude. just work on their upper body and don't really care about their legs. Skip, Skip leg, leg day. Because the CD09s are like out to there and it's like that fat. And the T56s are also super long, so. I, I want to It's here. a tight little package. Look at that, dude. What a photo. Well, there it is. Your LS is officially attached to your ZF trans. Uh, then we got to put some pounds on the trans and get your chassis ready. She can go in. Dumb question of the day. Donald question of the day. Have these been tested to uh, withstand the output that this thing's gonna give or no? Yeah? No. Your hope. Okay. I like that. <laughs> okay, I like that. <laughs> All right, so we got the trans on the engine. It looks absolutely awesome. The PMZ Motorsports, that killed it on this adaptive plate. I'm a very big fan. Like I said, we've seen a lot of adaptive plates around here and uh, well, it's a beautiful piece, so. It's such a cool package, dude. This looks like it could just fit in anything right now. Mm. Big fan. Big motor, little tranny. I think it's gonna work out. If you've never seen an LS and an E46 in person before, uh, obviously we tried to find as much information online as possible, but there's a couple things that we weren't able to just figure out by looking at pictures. So, I think right now we wanna do a rough mock-up of the engine in the bay and get a better idea how everything's gonna fit. So we know how to prep the engine bay in preparation for that. Before we get it in its final resting place with everything tight, we should probably know, do I have to cut something? Do I have to move things? Or can we? do we have to do this before it's in and stuff yeah. like that? So, Because as you can tell, there's a lot going on. Brian still can't decide if he wants to delete the ABS yet or if we have to pre-put in uh, heater hose lines because it might be too tight once the engine's in. There's just a lot of stuff when it comes to swaps. So let's shut up. Let's get the hood off and just mock it up. Why not, right? Sounds good. Just shut up and mock it up. Shut up. <laughs> Here, Don, hold this for us. Got it? You got Don't it? Drop cool. it, you idiot! <laughs> no! I'm not full! Don't drop it, Donnie! Don't drop it. <laughs> Damn, you really don't care about the hood that much? Yeah, I got it. Right over. I get stuck. <laughs> Quick release. I like that. Get that thing out of here. No way it comes off that easy. All right, that made things a lot easier. With this, uh, we are expecting the trans to land in factory location, which means we could use a factory trans mount and the factory drive shaft and whatever shifter that works with factory setup, which is a lot of times you don't have to have a custom trans mount, custom drive shaft, all that good stuff. Uh, but we do have is these mounts made by, who are they, TDR? What company is it? No idea. What's nice about these. What's nice about these is, look it. They give you like, Plus or minus like an inch of movement. So we bought these literally because, well. We were unsure. We were unsure, so. Mount the trans where it lands factory, and then we're just gonna slide these mounts until it meets the subframe. Do they go up and down too? Nope. The height's figured out. Just the back and forth that we need, so. so this is the factory trans mount. So Brian's gonna mount this on the chassis right now uh, in the factory location. So then when we go to put the engine, we can kind of just like slip it on top of it. All right, let's get this thing in there. Dude, I'm so pumped to see this just like in there. I've been thinking about this for a while. E46s are just like beefy looking chassis, so it just, they look so cool to LS in them. Help me one. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. What are you guys doing? You didn't tell me? You were busy. I'm back. Oh my God. What do I gotta do? The base shrunk very quickly. Yeah, right, that's <laughs> what I was saying. 
I thought this thing had a big ass engine bay. Mm, humbles you real quick. Oh, oh Bry, the firewall. Oh man, we might have to get you some block huggers. Dude, I'm pretty sure it's not looking like this is gonna work that great. Might have to delete those frame rails. <laughs> Look at this. Do we have to go we, back? Yeah. Okay. Push it. I need a light. I think we might be stuck back here. Uh, we're stuck in a few places, but it might be able to wiggle out of her. Right the right Did you get that red see, towel? Or ant? Hey, Bri. Seriously? <laughs> I got another one. <laughs> He's just pulling your leg, Bri. He got you a few. <laughs> oh, come on. First issue number one, um, the engine's sitting a little crooked because this header right here, the flange is actually hitting the frame rail. So, right there, because I mean, it's a big beefy flange, so if we cut the flange off and just actually weld a tube to it, we should be good, but... Or notch the, the frame rail? Right? No, no, no. It's because we're not going to use that big-ass collector anyways. So you can lop it off, you get a three-inch pipe, you go down and V-band it. Just put, you know, very common. A lot of guys were yelling at us too because they're like, oh, you're going crazy with the engine, just put factory headers on it. Um, well, we're kind of limited to our space, right? Getting like custom long tube headers or swap headers is just like thousands of dollars. So if we could sacrifice 12 horsepower, 15 horsepower to run factory manifolds. It's not even that, I, I ordered headers. There's there's either thousand, uh, like one, between a thousand and twelve hundred dollar headers or there's twenty four hundred dollar headers. And they're the exact same shape. But the thousand dollar ones are out of stock until God knows when. So I really have no choice if I want to drive my car. Next year I'll get freaking headers. Yeah, it's all right. This thing will make plenty of power on the factory header. It'll be great. Besides that, like we guessed, this metal skin right here is going to have to come off because uh, if we want any type of header to fit, that's not going to happen. And the heater hose lines, we got plenty of room, Bri, so that's really good news. Yeah, that's not too bad. So we can kind of figure those out after. First test fit, we learned a lot. We're taking the metal skin out. We should probably delete the ABS. It's not even being used anyways. It takes up, takes up a bunch of room. Got to cut the collective flange off of the header and it will fit. And then um, it looks like for the driver's side, which we kind of already assumed, we're gonna have to run a forward facing exhaust. So we're gonna actually have to take a manifold and run it forward and probably have a tube that comes down over yeah. and then it'll shoot straight back. We, we have plenty of room to shoot straight back. The only thing that sucks about that is just putting extra heat up front. But besides that, we do have a lot of room up here with the radiator, so it's not too big of a deal. It's very commonly done and I don't think we'll have much of an issue. This was good. First test fit is definitely a victory. There's some good things, there's some bad things, but I think we learned enough. Honestly, the more we look at it, it's not that bad of a fit at all. I think uh, this will go pretty good. Really don't need to do anything with the ABS. Like if you wanted to build an E46 streetcar and retain ABS, like you could definitely could. Oh yeah, for it's sure. It's really not in the way. So we got the engine mounts fully on now. So we should be able to put the engine under its own weight, so. There you go. Look at that. There she is. She's at home. Cool. Obviously, it's not staying there, but it's cool to see it right there. Let's get these out of here. Holy cow. Look at that. Looks Look at like, that. Looks like the hood's gonna fit, I think. Ish. I might need an M3 hood. That looks cool. Bitchin'. Without headers on, it looks like it fits in there like a glove. The headers are definitely what's gonna make it tight, but it definitely, um, looks fitting for sure. All right, what do you guys think? Tell me it looks great. It, do, it actually does look great. As much awesome. fun as we were making of it, it actually looks really good. It looks amazing. Hold on, and one thing, everyone's grilling us about using stock headers and not spend all that money on the long tubes. How much, are we gonna really gonna lose that much power? Uh, you're, listen, this thing's gonna make a lot of power yeah. no matter what you put <laughs> exactly. on. Exactly. You can put a Civic exhaust on this thing. It's gonna, <laughs> make, it's gonna make more than you need to do what you guys are exactly. wanting to do. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll give us something to look forward to in the future, get, getting you long tubes and all that stuff. I, yeah. I know eventually I'll probably end up with some sort of header. Maybe not. We'll, we'll see how much... Anybody that's done a project of this caliber knows how much these things will nickel and dime you when you get this far into it. Oh, yeah, bad. I can't even blame you for exactly. not. Exactly. You know I mean? So, PMZ Motorsports, thank you guys so much. Uh, product was beautiful. I'm so happy with Killed it. Killed it. Love it. Killed Love it. that product, for sure. 100%. So, so for now, uh, we learned a lot today. We got a lot done. I'm super happy, but now it's time to take it back out, cut a, things, cut, cut a couple things out, and go from there. That's it. So, I think we're ready. You want to do it? Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. Derek? See ya. Palm it. Oh, palm it.